Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I have two requests to ask of you. Now, I know I've already put up a video for Morella and have spoken of her at length at various times. I believe we've been helping her, or some of us have, for mm, well over a year. Well, anyway, some months better than others, but, um, okay, she got enough for rent, all right, her needs are about 800 a month now, and she got 250 which covered rent, and some very, very kind soul, before this request, sent $100 the other day, but the weird thing is, here poor Morella is, she's asking, telling me that they're into their reserves, what she calls, what she bought up to put back for those who are left behind. She even bought Salvador some, so he would have food if he was left behind, and if he doesn't accept Jesus, he will be. Well, anyway, the point is, out of the, what is that, 550 now, she got 100 to buy some food for the five of them. Now, he is supposed to be getting his from his sister and brother, but Morella helps him some when she can she her responsibility is to the four babies they're nine they're eight i believe they're four and they're three i think that's right they're little now salvador does take care of the two little ones she just cannot do all four children in a two-room house the two older boys have a d ADHD they're pretty hyperactive but she's working with them and they're becoming helpful and listening more so praise the Lord that's an answer to prayer do you know how many parents have to take their children to counseling and put them on medicine to get that result so that is an awesome result of prayer and I just think Whoever sent that hundred, and I'm sorry I don't remember your name, I will get it from PayPal, and I will tell Morella so she can thank you herself. But here's the funny thing. I got an email yesterday with Western Union telling me you did not complete your transaction. Well, I had been to my bank and saw it subtracted. And I answered him back, and I said, oh, yes, I did. If I had not, it would not have come out of my bank. Okay, so I go to Western Union. It was really on my mind. I couldn't even get a nap. So I had to, well, I got a little bit of one, and then my dog barked and woke me up, and then I got to thinking about that Western Union email, and I thought, I need to get up. And I need to make sure that money is there for her. Well, checking with Western Union, it was. Okay, so please, y'all, if you can, uh, help these people eat. Please, we're talking little children. And the mother, who has to stay healthy now, she's not very healthy. I can tell you from the symptoms she's told me, she's probably anemic. She's very weak. Now, on the other hand, okay, you e you PayPal that to me. I collect it all and I send it through Western Union. If you want to send it yourself to Western Union, you can email me at geniehardesty at gmail dot com. It's my name of my channel, but you use all lowercase. All one word. Okay? And I'll be happy to help you get you all the information you need to send money through Western Union. There's a small fee. I think $100 was 
seven or eight dollars okay so see that's why I collect it and I send it and yes she gets every bit and sometimes more now today I wasn't able to add but the fee but you know even that helps you know I don't take the fee out of whatever you donate I cover it not that I'm any big shot at doing that, but I'm just telling you, if you want to give $50, she's going to get $50. Now, I'll have that information in the description box. You have to send it to J.L. for Louise, M. for McCombs. That was my married name. J.L.M., the number four... Him, H-I-M, at A-T-T -T dot net. Do not use that to try to write to me. I've been long gone from AT&T. I had that when I lived way out in Inverness over almost eight years now. Okay, so... My daughter put me on her account, so I had to get that for Wi-Fi. I remember that now. Okay. Anyway, I do not have that anymore. So that is only for donating to PayPal. Okay? For those of you who can pitch in a little bit, like I've said before, a little bit adds up. Now, that's people needing to eat. Now... Here's another need. Remember, uh, some of you may know Sister Kimberly Mosley. All right, she just started a new channel and just put up a video about when she died when at the age of 23 when she had her cesarean section. She redid that testimony of when she was with Jesus, and it was it was very awesome. Well, then I got an email today saying now listen I don't know how to get into this other than to say it and y'all might thumbs me down for it but listen the Lord is going to do whatever he can do to get our attention Amanda Christian put up a video and on her home page what you get is a reading from her from the Bible on how once saved always saved is true and Kim believes as that now I love Kim with all my heart I love all my brothers and sisters in Christ does that mean I agree with them I'm trying to pull them from the fires of hell. Those people do not believe in repenting. Now, it looks like they believe in doing good deeds. Do you know Morella was following Tim Henderson and asked him? She didn't know many people. She hadn't been on the Internet long. She was just searching around, and she put up a thing about her needs her children and how she got down there and he just erased her com he erased deleted her comment he didn't know her she could have been a scam artist that's why you take things to the Lord you wait for the Lord to tell you yes or no if you're filled with the Holy Spirit he's going to tell you no, she's a scammer, stay away. Or, yes, she's telling the truth. She needs help. Okay, I'm kind of mixing the two. But there, we need emergent prayer for Sister Kim. Now, let me tell you something. If you listen to the video, she says that God told her she has... An illness that Amanda wouldn't say. And she said, we've all heard of cancer and AIDS. And listed some others. 
but she went to the ER, convinced she was dying, and nobody would touch her. You put two and two together for yourself. They sent her home and told her they had nobody there in that specialty that could take care of her. A big hospital. Now, I'm, I'm repeating this to the best of my ability. I'll link it, and you can go watch her. But it just kind of, you know, yes, we're to pray for one another. That's one of the good deeds that we are ordered to do. Praying for all the saints. It's in our armor. And pray in the Spirit at all times with all manners of prayers and petitions. And for all the saints. We're commanded to do that. But people who believe in once saved, always saved, they throw all those commandments, commands, I guess they think it's a suggestion, and they don't have to do it. But now that a friend has a need, oh, everybody, please. Well, of course we're going to. Not just because we have to. Because we love her. She's our sister in Christ. I love Kim mostly like I love my own flesh and blood. Because she's never actually preached that like the others. But she kind of quit being on here. And that's okay, Kim, if you see this. But really, it's not. You have to pick a side. Because one is not right and Jesus is not happy with it. He is not. It is not okay to believe in once saved, always saved. And that we don't have to do a thing to earn our salvation. It's not really earning it. It's keeping it. We have to obey Jesus. We have to do the things he told us to do. Love your neighbor as yourself. Well, doesn't that include praying for them? Doesn't that include donating money when they're hungry? In her case, they need funds for co-pays and hospital bills. Well, I have filed bankruptcy and thrown those things in the trash. I couldn't help it. They were in the thousands. Now, some of you people have hundreds and hundreds of dollars that could keep children from hungering, but you'd rather help Kim not have to go through bankruptcy at this late stage of the game, then please donate to Kimberly Mosley. I'll put a link to the video. All the information is on that. How about that? Because... Storm warning. Neat. It just sort of puts me off a little bit. Not that Amanda Christian's asking for prayer. Just... Let us all pray for her. If she does have COVID, if that is, uh, what about Psalm 91? I don't think she heard from God, and I don't think she has it. But I could be wrong. She lives in Kentucky. Has anybody heard of anybody getting it in Kentucky? They're not, you know, some of the local news is reporting some. I was fixing to watch a video on the state of Washington and how many cases. It's right here. Over 700 in Washington being monitored for coronavirus. And that was February 18th. Today's the 20th. Thursday, February 20th at 357. So to end this all, 
I didn't mean, I certainly don't ever mean to offend anybody. But the truth is the truth. The Lord will do whatever it takes to get your attention and to get you to repent of your sins and to listen to him and his word. And yes, there are scriptures that make it sound like nothing can ever snatch us from the hand of God. <clears throat> Things like that. And they're true also. If you're living the right life, not a thing's going to snatch you from the hand of God. And I believe she is. But don't you think she sins like the rest of us? Little things. A word spoken, a thought thought, a little deed done. We're supposed to repent of. Is it okay to repent in secret but tell your friends on YouTube you don't because you're once saved, always saved? Now, I don't know if that's true. I'm just saying it's just a supposition. What do you call that? What would Jesus think about that? Well, I probably just made ten more enemies, but I had to speak the truth. And I speak the truth in love. Just as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm speaking to anybody this pertains to. Not, not just Amanda. Not just Kim. Not just all the people that that um, Rhonda Empson's been trying to talk to. And has been getting lamb blasted from. Which is absolutely non-Christian. And totally wrong. But I understand your point of view, sort of. I kind of sort of do, that you think the blood of Jesus covers all, once and for all, that it was finished at the cross. So anybody that teaches another gospel is, is wrong and you're leading people down the wrong path and you're kind of confusing scriptures, you're twisting them to suit an easy believism lifestyle and that's the bottom line of it it's not easy living the way I teach it's not I'm going to make a confession to tell you how easy it's not I'm still human and as hard as I try to be as perfect as I can <laughs> I fall so short. Do you want to know what I did, brothers and sisters? I am embarrassed to tell you. But now everybody here knows, so you got to know. One of our ladies here on this floor received a beautiful bouquet of roses from her son for Valentine's. I'm telling you, they were the pricey kind. Well put together in a beautiful vase. And she brought them out to the lobby. Every floor has its own little lobby. It seats four people, but a lot of people have walkers and wheelchairs. And so you bring your own, <laughs> more or less. The others are for the healthier people. <laughs> so anyway... On the 16th, a lot of them were looking really open and like they didn't have a lot of life left. But there was one that was kind of to the back and it was beautiful. And I love flowers. Oh yes, I did. I took it. I took it home with some of the greenery and the baby's breath. I got my tiniest little vase and fixed it up just for me. After all, it was two days past Valentine's. Nobody sent me anything for Valentine's and it was just one. I mean, they were all going to die soon anyway. 
See how we rationalize our sins? Do you see? And Father told me, You stole that rose. And I was like, But, no, you stole that rose. Now take it back. I'm not kidding you. I know it wasn't audible, but it was in my head. And I was like, well, okay. I kind of wanted to do it in front of everybody. Because it was going to get out anyhow. And I thought, well, maybe it'll be a good lesson on people repenting. Because there's a whole lot of OSAS people here. But nobody was greet meeting in the little lobby. So I'm like, all right, I'll just carry it on down to her room. See if she's home. And she was. And she said, oh, it's okay. You can have it. I said, no, I can't. I said, father told me that it was a sin and to bring it back. I said, I want you to have it in your room and enjoy it while it lasts. And she took it. And she tried to tell me, it's okay. I brought him out there to share. And I said, no, it's not okay. Anyway, I finally left. So you see, you might not have even thought that was very wrong. Very wrong. You noticed how I worded that? You might not have thought that was very wrong. There's either wrong or there's right. It's not <clears throat> 50 shades of gray here, people. It's not wrong, kind of sort of wrong in the middle, or kind of sort of okay. It's either okay or it's not okay. This is the attitude we have to have with these little sins. Is it a sin or is it okay? What would Jesus tell you if you were to ask him ahead of time before you slipped up and said that word you're trying to not say or took that nice pen at work? Now, if a salesman leaves pens, I say take them. Unless he specifically hands it to your boss, your boss drops it. No, it's your boss's. But if he leaves a handful for everybody, that's different, okay? Know the difference. Those are gifts for employees in a certain area. You know who they're for and who they're not for. Okay, I just threw that in so you'd realize the difference. But those roses were a gift from her son to her, and she was just sharing them. And what if we had all taken one? Until they were down to like four. <laughs> it, it probably would have made her sick. I mean, you know what I mean. That just makes me sick. You know, the expression. So let's all just do what's right. The commands of Jesus. Stay on the straight and narrow. Repent when you sin. And don't ever think even a little sin is okay. It's covered if you ask for the forgiveness. It's covered. It sure enough is. So you have to turn around and forgive yourself. Okay? Don't keep beating yourself up for doing something that you slipped up and did. But I can't believe I did that. I want to whip my butt. But I don't really know how. Anyway, I hope you got my point. And I hope that you will pray for both women and their families. Morella always asks, with every email she sends to those of us she has an email address for, she asks for prayer for Salvador the father of the two little ones, 
<clears throat> for Lone Nail, the father of the two older ones that left her down here. See, even I want to call him a name. <laughs> Deadbeat dad. But we want him in heaven. I don't want to see any of them go to hell because they weren't raised right. Okay? Sins beget sins. And a lot of them come from how they're raised. That's why I don't want to see them go to hell for how their daddy treated their mother. Okay? So, she asks for prayers. For, she's got David and Timothy, the older boys. And then she's got Christina and, uh, oh, come on, the little baby. I can't remember the little baby. Sorry, Morell, I can't remember. <coughs> I rebuke that in Jesus' name. It's trying to come back on me from all this dust. I gotta try harder to keep the dust down, but I've been into a lot of it lately. Okay. So she asked for prayer for her family, a sister, her husband, their child, her mom, her dad, and his wife. So I'm asking you to pray for them. Now on to Kim again. Please pray. This Graves disease is just this Graves disease and that they make the decision to cut it out and just give her my friend down the hall I had hers cut out same thing Graves disease and she takes pills every day she has to have them every day she cannot let herself run out or she will be so tired she'll be like a slug and you can't go long without them Anyway, that's monitorable, that's fixable, that's doable. But if it's this other, pray for a miracle. We need to pray for a miracle. Heaven and Father, Heavenly Father, I ask you right now to put your healing hand upon Kim. And we ask you to kill any bacteria and any viruses that are attacking her body right now because her immune system is very, very low right now from the Graves' disease. It's an autoimmune. And, um, yeah, these autoimmune diseases are all intentional. They're a result from bioweapons. And then you add a bioweapon on top of another bioweapon. But you know what? Our Bible says no plague shall enter into our tent. All we have to do is believe it. Isn't that what we've been saying lately? Preaching and saying, say Psalm 91. Jesus said that's our preventative. Let us pray that she's been seeing that, but she hadn't had internet. But then she started her own channel and gave her her testimony of when she died. So, I'm a little confused. Um, I'm going to end this here. I think I've said way too much. Okay, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ in Nazareth over Kim and over every cell in her body. And I pray that she recovers in no time and that the doctors will be baffled. I pray for Morella and that people's hearts will be softened and opened up to help these children eat. And that they will have whatever they need because some of us can afford to share it. Okay. I pray that Kimberly and her husband get quick, quick answers 
and that it is not what she was told. But if that was father, if that was father, there's a reason. And if he allowed it, he can unallow it. So I pray that if it is Father's will, that he will heal her. That's how I'll put it. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, over the internet connection, over myself, over all of you who see this. I pray none of my words were not taken out of context. And that you understood what I was saying. I plead the blood of Jesus over all your devices. And your internet connections. So with that I'll say bye for now. I will talk to you later. And if I forget to put any information in the description box. Please remind me. Because I might forget. And pray for my memory. It's getting worse. And I don't want to keep saying that and claiming it. But facts are facts. Illnesses cause things. And ME causes memory failure. And so does age. I'm getting old. Not everybody waits till they're 80 to stop forgetting their children's names. Or people's names. People I've seen around here since I moved in. I'll come up to them and go. Uh. What was your name? I can't remember. Scriptures. That I've known all my life. I can't remember. How they go. Where they're from. New Testament. Old Testament. And, and it. You know, it doesn't scare me, but it's going to be kind of hard to do this if it gets any worse. So pray for my memory. Okay, with that, I say bye for now. I will talk to you later.